Um, but I do think that, it, you know, if we're going to be able to get back to a place in this country where we actually have people who are advocating for the Constitution in both parties, um, then we're going to need people to, you know, have some more courage than my former colleagues are showing right now and be willing to say, no, I won't accept this, I won't stand for it, um, when you have to stand up and, and say so and put your name next to that vote. Um, because this notion of the secret ballot being the only time that you can go against Donald Trump um, helps to strengthen Donald Trump. So former Trump lawyers Sidney Powell and Kenneth Chesbro just struck uh, plea deals this week in Fulton County. Both have agreed to testify in future trials. Based on your investigations as vice chair of the Select Committee investigating January 6th, do you think they have information that could have bigger consequences for people up the food chain, including Donald Trump? Certainly. I think there's no question. Um, and I think that in, in both cases, I mean, we know, for example, that uh, Sidney Powell was in uh, key meetings at the White House, including one where Donald Trump uh, may well have, have signed uh, the, uh, invoking the Insurrection Act um, with Mike Flynn in the room, who advocated seizing voting machines. We know that uh, Kenneth Chesbro was directly involved in the, the, the fake electors scheme. Uh, it was his scheme. Fraudulent electors. Well, he, he certainly helps to put it in place, but at the end of the day, Donald Trump oversaw everything. Right. And um, that scheme of presenting false electors to the United States Congress in order to seize power, to overturn an election, to try to convince Mike Pence to take unlawful and unconstitutional action um, absolutely directly touches Donald Trump. Uh, a New York State judge fined Donald Trump $5,000 for violating his gag order in the civil fraud trial. Uh, even raising the prospect of possibly imprisoning him. To be clear, $5,000 is, is pocket change for Donald Trump, but this is about Donald Trump smearing one of his clerks, falsely accusing the clerk of having an affair with Chuck Schumer. There's literally no evidence of this. You know what it's like to be on the end of a Donald Trump smear, and, and now some House Republicans, other than you and King Kinzinger, know what it's like to get death threats. Um, do there need to be more serious consequences for Donald Trump when it comes to this sort of thing? You know, I think what we have seen over the course of, you know, the last um, almost uh, three years now since January 6th has been um, almost without exception, almost without exception, the judiciary has just been um, in, just, just stalwart in terms of recognizing and understanding the threat to the republic that's posed by Donald Trump's past behavior. Um, by what he did leading up to January 6th, and frankly, what he's continued to do. And, and so I think that it's really important that people recognize the efforts that he's putting in to try to tear down every institution of our democracy. Um, and I think that, that we, have, we, we all need to be very clear about the extent to which the judges and the justices in this country, and I, you know, again, as I said, almost without exception, whether they've been appointed by Democratic presidents or Republican presidents, um, have a very clear understanding of the danger here um, and a very clear understanding and dedication to the rule of law. And, and as a nation, we all ought to be very grateful for that. And we ought to reject the kind of attacks um, that we're seeing, obviously, launched by Donald Trump, but also the kind of lies coming out of Jim Jordan and some other House Republicans, the notion that the entire judiciary system or that the FBI is weaponized against us. Um, and, and I would urge that people think about as we look at the threats globally, the notion that we've got Republicans saying we're going to defund the FBI, we're going to defund the Department of Justice, uh, Jim Jordan wants to stop a number of the programs that have kept us safe since 9-11, um, that is very dangerous. And, and people like that don't understand the threat we face. And as you know, it's not just House Republicans, it's not just Donald Trump, it's, in, it's Fox. It's an entire right-wing ecosystem that is, that is amplifying these lies. And Donald Trump is likely to be the next Republican presidential nominee. And he has a decent shot of being elected the next president. I mean, it, it could happen. What would a second Donald Trump term look like? Well, he cannot be the next president. Um, it, it, because if he is, um, all of the things that he attempted to do um, but was stopped from doing by responsible people around him at the Department of Justice, at the White House Counsel's Office, all of those things he will do. There will be no guardrails, and everyone has been warned. After January 6th, after our investigation, after all of the evidence that we laid out about all of the steps in his multi-part plan to overturn the election, there can be no question 
uh, that he will unravel the institutions of our democracy. So um, we, are, we are facing a moment in American politics where we have to set aside partisanship and we have to make sure that people who believe in the Constitution are willing to come together to prevent him from ever again setting foot anywhere near the Oval Office. But if it came down to it, even though you disagree with Joe Biden on almost every issue under the sun, other than maybe Ukraine and Israel, would you vote for him over Donald Trump? We're going to see what, what happens. We're going to see how things unfold. I think Donald Trump is the single most dangerous threat we face. I would imagine that there will be a number of other candidates in the race.